everybody. Welcome back to episode 46 of the Talk of Fame podcast with your host, Kylie Montigny. I'm so excited to have on the upcoming singer songwriter, Savannah Ray. Thanks so much for on, Savannah. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Of course. So you are a singer songwriter. What kind of made you want to start doing that? Yeah, so I would probably have to give that one to my parents. Um, they introduced me to music, all different types of music at such a young age that they kind of uh, helped foster my love and appreciation for music. And they started taking me to concerts when I was around 10 or 11. And I remember specifically, I went to an Evanescence concert when I was 11. And I told my mom that I wanted to be just like the lead singer. Her name is Amy Lee. She's incredible. And I told her that that's what I want to do. That's what I want to be. And thankfully, my parents took me seriously. And so they enrolled me into vocal and guitar lessons and it just uh kind of stuck i fell in love with it and here we are now like 10 years later that's awesome like do you have like a favorite concert that you went to so far as you your career did like a favorite kind of concert that you went to that's a really good question um i would say my favorite concert that i've been to is probably a Motley Crue and Kiss concert. Um, I, I'm also big into the rock side of things as well. That one was super, super cool. And my favorite concerts are probably ones that I haven't been to yet, honestly. Yeah. Like, George Strait is my favorite um, of all time. And I haven't been to one of his concerts. But um, my other favorite is Co Wetzel. Uh, I have been to his. have been to a few of his. So I would say probably those. Probably yeah, Coetzel and Motley Crue. Are you like, as you kind of like a country singer, do you like country music as well? Or are you just kind of like not as much as like country, the country music fan? Um, I, I think that country is always going to be my number one. Um, it's what I've been listening to since I pretty much came out the womb. Like the first job I ever wanted was I wanted to be a horse trainer. I wanted to, you know, train horses for a living. Um, didn't end up doing that, obviously, but I do do country music now. Um, but I say my, my second most listened to genre and I take like a lot of influence from as well as uh, rock music. So, but I mean, I love everything. I, I really do. I love everything. And I've done a lot of different types of music in my life. Um, thankfully, I have just... I've been everywhere from rock to pop to even like some Broadway stuff that I've done. So it's it's been fun, but I think the main is always going to be country music in uh, with the little hints of rock and stuff here and there. Yeah, same here. I'm really into everything like pop, country, Broadway, and all those things sure. and everything. So music has always kind of been a huge part of my life. I was literally listening to country music before. I've been really into country music over the last year, and like I just became a fan of country music I'm like the same kind of exact person because like mm -hmm. I like my all of my favorite concerts are when I see them for the first time like right. I'm a big Walker Hayes fan so I'll be seeing him next month and he'll probably become my favorite concert I ever been to even though I've been to like a bunch of concerts but sure <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome so like as you kind of mentioned before you rolled into vocal and guitar lessons at Grammy Award winning Michael Morris's Rockstar Academy what was mm -hmm. your experience taking lessons on that yeah, I mean, it was great because I was really, really young. I didn't really know much about anything when it came to music. And so having uh, somebody, you know, that has obviously done music a lot before, you know, he's won a Grammy. So having um, people on my side when I was so young to kind of teach me kind of just the basics of what I needed to know. And it was a great, like, you know, jumping off platform um, for my later years. And it, it was uh, it was really fun, too, because me and a bunch of different other people my age, we kind of, you know, formed a band, per se. And we would um, do fun, like, little recordings and music videos and go out on the town and play and stuff. And um, the first time I ever performed on stage was actually uh with them when I was around 12 years old and after that I kind of just fell in love with music like I knew that at that point in time that that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Oh I love that like music has always kind of been a huge part basically everyone's life since the pandemic started it's kind of something people are getting probably getting into more and more depending on each day and what gender they like but like as you kind of the, as the pandemic kind of grew how do you think the music industry has kind of changed since like, the pandemic started? Yeah, it's been really, really rough. Um, yeah, I mean, it kind of decimated the entire music industry as a whole. But I, I had um, about 
I was supposed to be on the road like 245 days out of the year of 2020. I was supposed to be playing shows all the time. And I think I maybe got through two or three shows <laughs> until everything got canceled. And, you know, that kind of forced me to go back to the drawing board because there wasn't anything to do. You know, nothing was open. Everything was closed. Quarantine, all that stuff. And so as artists, I think that most of us had to pretty much just go back to the drawing board and figure out how can we stay relevant? How can we stay, you know, creating material? How can we stay like in people's minds as far as our music goes without not playing, <laughs> you know, not actually getting out there and playing. And so I think that that's where social media, you know, comes in. And we did, I I'm speaking for like every single artist, cause I know it's the exact same for everyone. Yeah. But, um, you know, I did, um, a lot of live streams on just so many different platforms. I did like virtual concerts from my house. I just tried to upload content to social media as much as I could just to keep myself out there. You know, even if it is on the internet and whatnot, it's, it, I think that you can actually reach a lot more people on the internet um, yeah. just with, you know, how quickly things spread and things spread like wildfire. It's crazy, especially on TikTok now. Mm -hmm. um, TikTok's a huge one for that. Um, and I think that that's kind of when TikTok really took off is during the quarantine kind yeah. of era because n n we didn't have anything else to do, you know? <laughs> and so, but I think a social media plays probably the biggest role in keeping us some sort of relevant and you know in putting our music out there and getting ears on our music um even though we couldn't really do much so it's uh it was definitely an interesting time and the entertainment industry probably took one of the biggest hits i'd say yeah for sure the, the pandemic really was basically hard for everyone because like we didn't know what to do like we, we couldn't see our family we, we couldn't do things we're used to doing and like right. we couldn't go to concerts, performing, we couldn't really do anything except basically watching television. Like that's right. really the only thing we can do. And so like we basically for songwriters, like for everyone, basically I will say it's like they, most of the time they just both songs and like the last kind of two years they released more and more songs that they wouldn't have released. Mm -hmm. Like in past years before even COVID, like this is like the most songs they recorded and right. just get put out for COVID outfit. So like it was basically a big kind of deal for everyone. But like well let's say like the quarantine has kind of impacted your music and how much like your like the pandemic has hit your uh, music. Like how much it, how much has it changed for you? Yeah, I mean like I said we just we couldn't do much during that whole quarantine Part. And even after we were technically, you know, out of quarantine, whatever, is that everything was still closed. Everything, you know, wasn't open. And so I was like, okay, well, I guess we're going to use this time to write a lot of new music and record a lot of new music, get in the studio as much as possible so that whenever things do open up, um, you, you know, I can just hit the ground running instead of trying to play catch up and then, you know, start writing my stuff you know, and then recording my stuff. Like I wanted to have a bunch of new material kind of coming out of the gate. And I have so many songs, even from 2020 that I haven't released yet, like so many, a ton um, that I'm finally getting a chance to release now uh, probably within the next you know few weeks I'd say that it's a uh, it's very exciting to finally be able to release stuff that I wrote you know a year and a half ago or whatnot so it's a uh, I'm, I'm really excited about it for sure yeah for sure so a couple years back you got to open for Jason Alderman in that Texas State Fair back in 2016 what was it like for you to open for him yeah, I mean, Jason is such an incredible artist. You know, I look up to him because he has a lot of the sounds, like, sonically that I also have. A lot of that. It's country music, you know, but it's rock music. He has so many just uh, just really rocking songs, and I love that. I love that so much. And so he's also just so good at what he does and is a huge name, you know, in the industry. Everyone knows who Jason Aldean is, and he's yeah. made that name for himself, and it's just to open up for an artist of that caliber is just such an honor. And especially too at the Texas State Fair. I mean, I've been going to the Texas State Fair since I can remember, you know, I'm a Texas girl through and through. And so to perform on such a stage as that was just insane. And it's probably one of my favorite things that I've ever done for sure. Oh, that's awesome. Like, were you born in Texas or are you? Yes. 
Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I was born in Texas. I was born in San Antonio. Oh, that's awesome. I'm a Pennsylvania girl, so I'm way up there. That was uh, amazing. I used to live in Pennsylvania, so. Oh, really? What part? Um, Doylestown. Oh, really? I live kind of that up from there. I live in, like, Strand and area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I used to live there. I've lived in... I've lived in like 15 different states, um, so <laughs> we've been, me and my family have been uh, moving around since I can remember, but originally from Texas, I'm from a little, I um, was born in San Antonio, but from a little small town kind of outside of it called Bernie. Oh, that's nice. So you recently came out with a song called Typical Texas Girl. What kind of inspired you to write that song? So <laughs> Typical Texas Girl is kind of an homage to the fact that girls from texas and i'll speak for a lot of us as well and myself that um you know we're always kind of dressed up we're always dressed to the nines i always say that dolly parton should have been from texas because she kind of embodies the uh, texas spirit and how um we're just we're very over the top and extra with our outward appearance and but i think that with that comes a lot of uh judging us you know you're judging a book by its cover on what we look like and i think that so my Texas gals out there are just some of the strongest, hardworking ladies that I've ever met. Um, and so I wanted to kind of pay homage to them in a really fun way called Typical Texas Girl. It's kind of sarcastic, like, oh, yeah, I am a typical Texas girl. But, you know, I'm also this, this, and this, which makes us pretty special. And I had the uh, honor and privilege of writing that with country music legend Pam Tillis. Um, she's incredible and so we wrote that also with my buddy jesse isley and britain cameron and uh it's a, it's a really fun song and i got to shoot the music video on a, a beautiful farm out in uh, texas as well so it was it was a really good one it was a really good one it's definitely one of my favorite ones that i've released thus far oh i love it so do you have anyone they look up to as a singer songwriter or just kind of in general yeah i would say that as far as my influences go, I'm influenced by so many different things and so many different people. But if I had to like categorize myself as, you know, who I am and what I sound like and kind of my musical style, these three people have zero to do with each other, literally zero. But <laughs> George Strait, Miranda Lambert, and Co. Wetzel, which is just those have nothing to do with each other. Although I think George and Miranda have sang together a yeah. few times and whatnot. But somewhere in the middle of all of them, you'll find me. You know, I'm country with an edge. I'm country rock. And I find a lot of influence from those three artists. Um, specifically, uh, just Miranda Lambert is one of my favorites. I'm very blessed and honored to be uh, an ambassador for her clothing company, Idolin. So I get to wear you know, her cute clothes on stage, but also, you know, she's a, she's one of the few females, um, that I've just, like, really connected with, and I'm like, yeah, she's super cool, and mm -hmm. so, uh, her style, her style for sure, a lot of her edgier stuff is, like, my music, and I'm like, yeah, that's awesome, and then, but still that traditional country, like, George Strait, and still that country alternative, like, Co Wetzel, and like I said, somewhere in the middle, you'll find me. Yeah, for sure. Miranda Lambert is one of the best uh, in country music in our, like, basically our both for generation. But did you ever meet her since you're in her clothing line or you never met her? I haven't had the chance to meet her yet. No. So hopefully we can get something working soon. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I literally obsessed with Miranda Lambert. Like, like, if you listen to country music song, you automatically know it's Miranda Lambert. Like, I yeah. can automatically choose if it's Miranda Lambert or not. But since you were in the new year, uh, where are your goals to achieve in 2022? Um, I have a lot. I um, I actually created a, a mood board, a dream board, uh, whatever you want to call it for 2022. And uh, I have a lot of goals, you know, obviously stuff that I want to do kind of just like in my life, such as playing the Ryman, playing the Opry, you know, going to the CMAs, you know, all of that stuff that people really look up to, which I don't know if that's going to happen in 2022. I mean, fingers crossed it does, yeah. you know, but opening up for people, I would love to open it up, open up for Jason Aldean um, again. I would love to open up for Miranda, for Co, um, any of those people as well. And then, you know, just playing all over the place as much as I can. Um, I want to cross off kind of like my bucket list. I think I have like six more states to go to on my Continental 48. So mm -hmm. I want to cross off all those states, getting to play in those states as well. And just uh, touring as much as possible, I think is I, um, my number one, just because, you know, 2020, 
2021 as well we didn't get to do much of that um unless you were a bigger artist in 2021 um so gotta make up for the past two years yeah like the last two years i knew it's kind of hard to travel for basically everyone due to covid mandates and all those things so it was kind of hard to travel for basically everybody and right. since you couldn't travel to country you can then go to other countries and do like just family and all those things and everything so that was basically that was basically a goal for me I kind of wanted to last year, but I never, we only yeah. went to a one state and traveled like once last year, so never kind of got it possible, but, you know, hopefully yeah. it's better for us to travel, but um, when you're writing a song, what do you usually focus on first, the music or the lyrics? Um, I say that every song is different, and it honestly really is. Sometimes I will uh, pick some chords out on my guitar when I'm sitting down, you know, writing and stuff, and I'll pick some that I like the sound of, you know, whatever tone that I'm going towards, like, oh, I want to write about, you know, someone that did me wrong, so, you know, it's going to be, it's going to sound like a little bit, like, mad, per se. I'm going to pick some chords that kind of match that. Sometimes I will just um, write a whole bunch of ideas on a piece of paper, and then kind of see what exactly I'm even like talking about <laughs> and then go, you know, and create some music and go put some chords around it. Um, especially it's different too, when you get into co-writes and stuff, when you're writing with other people, sometimes they'll have an idea, um, you know, music wise, sometimes they'll have an idea lyric wise. And then you're like, okay, cool. Let's do that. Um, and even sometimes I'll have, a some of my producers, they know me pretty well. And so they're like, Hey, what do you think about, this music what do you think about this sort of like lyric like this and they'll send it to me and i'm like okay let's work on it you know so it's um i think that every single song is different when i'm writing by myself and especially when i'm writing with other people and but i do love to write with other people um i actually might prefer it i'm not entirely sure they're pretty 50 50 for me but it's just so fun to be able to write with other people because i always say that two minds are better than one you know three minds four minds depending on how many people you got in the room but um you know other people can come up with such great ideas that maybe i didn't come up with or you know something that they say kind of turn something in my mind and i'm like oh what about this so i really do like writing with other people but as far as myself as far as myself, it will be like 4 a.m. and something will just come to my mind. I'm like, voice note real fast. So <laughs> Yeah, so it was like different kind of moods, like different kind of day. Basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so the final question for the interview is, what is some advice for younger generations that like to become a singer songwriter one day? Yeah, um, I definitely say always stay true to yourself and always stay true to who you are as an artist. Um, to what you want to say and the type of music that you want to make. I've been doing music, like I said, since I was 12 years old, you know, professionally, and I've done everything under the sun from pop to rock to R&B, you know, I told you all that. And so, but with that comes a lot of people in the industry that kind of pressure you to go certain ways, like, oh, you would sound really good if you did this. You would sound really good if you did this. And I was a young kid, you know, I'm 15 years old. I don't know. I just like music. You know, I like singing and I like performing and that's about as much as I thought about it. You know, I'm young and impressionable and that's pretty much it. But, um, a lot of people will try to sway you to do certain things yeah. <laughs> like, you know, you need to sing this song. You need to perform here. I'm like, uh, okay, sure. Whatever you say, Mr. Manager, mm -hmm. you know? And so I think it's, it's really easy to lose yourself when you're so young. Um, especially, you know, if you're just starting off as young as I did. And so I think that as I've gotten older, I've really put my foot down on, nah, man, like this is me. This is what I want to say. You know, this is what I want my music to sound like. And I'm not kind of differentiating from that at all. And so it's taken a good amount of time to put a, a good team around me that really get the vision and get where I'm going and stuff. Um, but I'm really glad, don't get me wrong, I'm really glad that I had some of those rather unfortunate experiences back in the day because they shaped, you know, me to be who I am today and kind of be really certain about what I want to do. But um, it, it was still rather unfortunate, <laughs> you know, to have people um, just on your case all the time, like, this is what you're going to do. And I'm like, Ooh, <laughs> so, but I would just say, you know, stay true to yourself, stay true to who you are, all your values, all your morals, all that good stuff. And, um, 
you know, it's uh, it ultimately comes down to the music and what you want to say, and you want to make sure that it's a good reflection of you and who you are. So I would say, be yourself all the time, twenty four seven. Yeah, for sure. Like as a kind of like a woman or a young girl in general, it's kind of hard in the industry means you feel they people always kind of pressure you to do this, do that. You have to do this, and you have to be skilled, yeah. kind of good to be popular and people to like you. That's yeah, it's really happens. hard to um because you'll you know work with people who you think are um very esteemed in the industry you know they have all this list of credits and whatnot and sure they may have a ton of experience and i would never discount you know anybody who has a lot more experience than i do you know i'm still young um i'm still learning and but you know there comes a point to where you're like uh i i need to you know separate myself from that just because it's um maybe they just have a different vision for you, you know, yeah. and that might not be the vision that you see for yourself. And that's totally fine. Um, I don't think any way is wrong and whatnot, but you know, staying true to who you are and staying true to yourself and what you want, I think is probably going to be so much better for you in the long run too, because you know, you wouldn't compromise your integrity for anything. Like if someone wants you to do this song that they really like that, they're like, this is the song you're like, Nope that's not it, you know, and so it's, um, it's hard to say no, but I think that it's necessary, you know, when you're talking about integrity and, you know, uh, all of that good stuff, so always stay true to yourself, that's my number one, number one piece of advice. Me too, so I just want to thank you so much for coming on this podcast, it means so much, you're amazing, I'm so glad to have you on, and keep doing what you were doing because you're amazing at what you do and just keep going and so thank you so much for coming on we'll definitely see you soon for sure thank you so much thank you thank you so much for having me of course thanks so much bye bye